heard it. You know something? We need to try all that again with audio. Sorry about that. Welcome everyone to Teach Me PCB. I'm Mark and I'm doing a little impromptu soldering lesson for you. How to get started in surface mount assembly. I would like to... Sh I'm not even on the right camera. We're going to try round three here. And I'm going to stop my recording. Welcome everyone to Teach Me PCB. I'm Mark and I am going to show you how to get started in surface mount soldering. This is take three. I keep doing silly things like leaving my microphone off or uh, not having the camera on me when I'm speaking and having you stare into the blank nothingness that is the void. Anyhow, um, I'm going to walk you through just some basic getting started stuff and then I'll clip out the first two minutes of this video. Anyhow, I know you guys are excited to learn how to do some soldering, uh, and I've got some irons to demonstrate that for, you know, with for you, but I want to do that with a FLIR camera so we can see just how accurate the temperature measurements, you know, realistically are. Um, I don't know myself, but I've got to find a way to do it where you can see it and I can at the same time get rid of the... Uh, the glare and you know have enough light so I've got some lighting things to play around with and figure out I'll get to that this week uh, don't you worry if you want to be around when I go through each camera um, make sure you hit the little bell button subscribe and get the alerts because I'm probably not gonna have time to do them all in one go it'll it'll take too long so anyways we've got that um, what I've got for you today is something a little different I was going to show you how to solder using a silly little kit you can get off Amazon. And I was going to show you how to make a couple tools to make your job easier. So I don't know that this actually does anything, and I don't really care if it does anything or not. Um, it just serves as a test bed for me to show you how to solder things. And it's a little hassle hot air surface level kit. There we go. Um, you know, various pads on it. Uh, QFN44 should give us a little bit of difficulty. A uh, uh, SOP or TSOP 20, that should be a little rough too. But it, it lets us do some things. But here's the problem. When you're soldering and doing everything it is, that it is that you want to do, You don't want these parts moving around on you, right? You don't want to chase these things around the board. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually back off and we're going to make a tool to hold them in place for us. So this is a little bit of welding rod. Um, it's stainless filler. It's just a piece of thick wire. If I had a copper, maybe, you know, 12 gauge or 10 gauge sitting around, I might use that as well. So if you have an old... Um, not an extension cord because those will use strands of copper but if you have uh, an old piece of copper wire you know like Romex cable you'll have a piece of wire in there like that and then you just need a pair of pliers and what we're gonna do is bend maybe stainless wasn't the best choice that stuff uh, fights back but we're going to make a little tool to hold our parts down for us while we're soldering. And I am, well, you'll see it once it's done, but I'm just making a few bins. There's nothing really too accurate about it. Uh, essentially what I'm making is a cantilevered thing that's just going to sit there and poke down on things. Uh, maybe about that long. There we go. Man, that stuff is tight. And then to cut it, I want to uh, not leave too sharp a point. So I am going to spin it like it's a piece of pipe and I've got pipe cutters in my hands. And just keep working it back and forth. There we go. 
Now, um, what this will do, and I wonder if I can't get this on a better view, is just sit there, and once I get my part lined up, it'll apply a little bit of downward force so I don't have to chase this thing around the board. Right? Nothing to it. Just a piece of... Uh, just a piece of metal that is going to do that. Now, um, again, it doesn't really matter what metal you use. We're just using it for a downforce. Get a little of this debris out of the way. It probably would help too to just round things over. If I put a little bit of a an abrasive near it, just to take off the uh, rough edges. You never know where one's going to catch you. I tell you, if I keep injuring myself in these videos, they're going to take me off workers comp. Okay, so there we go. Next up, so we've got a tool that does that for us. That's cool. So the next thing that we need is something that allows us to see. Um, I fortunately have a nice, cool uh, microscope that I'm going to use. You guys might not have that. That is totally cool. Grab um, any sort of magnification device that you've got available to you. Uh, an eye loop. Some, you know, the, the things that they sell in sewing stores are great. You know, you get these nice big objective lenses and it'll focus stuff in. It really just depends on your eyesight and your budget. But you don't need what I what I have, but I need what I have to show you what I'm going to do. Otherwise, you couldn't see it. And then you'd be all sad and say, Mark, Mark. By the way, as we go through this, if you do have any questions, please, by all means, ask. The reason that this is live and not a recording is so you can interact. All right. And again, you don't want to be chasing your parts and thing, your board around the table. That makes your life unnecessarily difficult. You don't want anything to do with that. So the thing that we're going to do here is get this on microscope and then get it lined up and take a look. Oh no, it's blurry. Let's see if I can zoom out here a little for you. Nope, that's as zoomed out as we're going to get. Okay, so we just want to get that thing lined up as best we can on all those pads. And it's a little off, but it's close enough for the moment. The next thing that you want to do is apply flux. Flux cleans. and protects the metal surface from oxidization. So I'm going to get a little flux on all the sides here. And then the last one. Welcome viewers who are just now joining me in this little impromptu session. The goal is to try to teach everyone how to get started in surface mount soldering. If you don't already know, this video will be edited down later, but it's live now so that you can interact if you want to. And if you don't, that's cool too. Oh, so the first problem that I have is see this little notch up in the corner? That's telling me that that's where pin zero is. Well, I don't have my IC oriented properly. It needs to go like that. Then we've got that little tool I just made. So once I get this thing in place, I'm just going to set a weight on the back end to apply a little downforce. So now I don't have to worry about my part flying around. That's kind of handy, huh? It does look a little weird because we are shooting through uh, that flux. 
So then the next thing that I'm going to do is tin my tip. Let's see if we make sure we're on screen there. And that is just to melt solder on the end of the tip, get it all nice and shiny, and then clean it off. Your tip should always be shiny and clean before you start doing anything. All right, so next up, I'm just going to make sure everything's aligned. I'm going to heat up the pad a little and apply a tiny little bit of solid solder just there in the corner, just enough to lock that pin down, right? No big deal there. And while I think of it, I forgot to mute my phone, so let me do that. There we go. Then I'm going to move down over into this corner. Emil, welcome. Thank you for joining us or joining me. Now that you're here, we have an us. Okay, so I'm just working my way around. Just getting a little bit of solder stuck in each little spot. I want to get this chip locked into position. Uh, okay, so I'm seeing things like that's perfect compared to what I'm doing. There's two tricks. One is flux. Uh, I don't know what the other trick is, uh, but I'm, I'm sure there's more tricks. We actually have a great person who joined us, um, who joined the course or joined the Discord recently. His name is Sebastian Weber. He is a process engineer, actually process engineer level two. The dude is amazing. He can outsolder me any day of the week, um, night and day. Oh, greetings from India. Um, Mohan, I hope I pronounced that correctly, welcome. And Leandro, or Leo, welcome, welcome. So all I'm doing here is just getting the chip stuck. You never want to leave your iron on for more than five seconds less if you can get away with it not too much less because you do want the solder to melt one of the things that i like is this really really thin solder paste not solder paste but um solder wire i mean this stuff we measured it in the last one it's like 1 64th of an inch it is tiny tiny because then you can be really careful about how much that you put on. Also, if you have any questions as we go through, guys, um, feel free to ask them. I'm happy to answer them. I'm just going to do a couple more of these, and then we've worked our way around, and we can start doing a field, and then I'll start doing some other, some other parts, okay? At this point, I no longer need my trick piece that I just made. I mean, I didn't need it after the first couple, but I sure don't need it now. Okay, there we go. Nope, give me a blob. I want to, no, don't come off. Darn it. I'm, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a solder bridge and I'm going to fix it. Let's just blob it there. No, nope, dang it. There we go, solder bridge. Why is it you can never make them when you want to make them? All right. So I made a solder bridge and I could absolutely clear this bridge. Um, by the way, for those of you that don't know what I'm looking at, I'm looking right there. I could probably clear this with just the iron because it isn't a whole heck of a lot of solder. And I could probably just put it in there and just drag it, uh, drag the solder off the pads and I'd be good. But instead, I'm going to put a little bit of solder braid here and heat it up and soak the solder into the braid. And bye bye blob. 
right? Welders have a saying, um, a grinder in paint makes me the welder I ain't. And it's kind of the same thing for solder. If you have solder wick and you have a solder problem, you know, a solder bridge, once you have the solder wick, you don't have a solder bridge anymore. It just cleans it right the heck up. So we'll do a couple more of those. And then if you guys have any questions, ask them by all means. I have a chisel, not really a chisel tip. Um, I would call it a blade, uh, a flat tip. And I'm really just soldering two at once using minimal amounts of solder and just dragging it right past. Oh, I wasn't on screen there. I guess I'm doing a couple more in that case then, just so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Feel free to shout at me. Oh, Mohan, I am not the master by any means. Um, but my friend Sebastian, who joined the course, he is. And with any luck, we can get him to teach us. Um, he does, like I said, he, he lives and breathes this stuff all day, every day. But man, ain't life pretty once you have flux. Right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Emil. I saw some Rossman video where he would just brush over all the pads with solder instead of going over each pin. Thoughts? Yep. Yeah, um, once they get small enough, you can't really get in there. Um, and that's really kind of what I'm doing here. You get that flux on and, I mean, here. Let's just do this and see what happens. And this is an abundance of flux that I just put on, right? Yeah. Um, it makes life fast and easy. Um, is it the best way to do it? I could switch out to a narrow tip and I could hit each pin if I was better. If I was Sebastian, I could do that. I'm not that good. I have friends that are that good, but, um, you know, I'm not one of them. <laughs> so we might as well just finish this up. One of the things that makes this easy is the courtyard, the area around this particular IC is huge. Oh, did I get a bridge? Nope, I can fix it with the iron. And then I've got enough left on my tool for that. But there's plenty of room around the IC to work, so I have no trouble getting to anything that I'm doing, right? No problems at all. Um, and that one's done. We're attached. We could, let's see if we can zoom in and look at those in better detail. Yeah, I don't know that we can see, I don't know if you guys can see anything there. It looks pretty washed out on my screen. Let's back out that zoom a little. But you want each of those little J leads to be, oh man, yeah, that is zoomed in to be connected to the pad below with solder. You kind of want the solder to go a little bit up the side of the toe, if you can, um, cover it. You certainly don't want bridges, but you know, we're attached. I'll have to get my other microscope in, you know, working so that you guys can see that. Oh, you know what I can do that'll make it better? I have an idea. Let's blast it with some of this. Where are we? Alcohol, yeah. <laughs> oh, and we've got greetings from Australia. Welcome from Australia. Okay. Let me get a little something to wipe that up with. There we go. 
and maybe we'll get a better look at those joints. And then I'm going to show you another couple tricks too, maybe. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Solder loves two things, heat and flux. And metal. Solder is forming intermetallic bonds on surfaces as it works, right? Um, the solder mask, the, the colored stuff that makes that gives board their colors, it acts like a solder dam and prevents solder from going to places it's not supposed to be. And we can see those a little better. Um, so those pins, they could do with a little bit more solder, um, but is it worth it? Does it matter, you know, versus the, uh, the risk of screwing up? I don't know that it does. So anyhow, let's back off and let's do some of the smaller jelly bean parts, uh, as Bob Martin calls them. So these little parts, are two pin rectangular SMD pads. And you get them, they come in these little packages like this. They are dirt cheap, they're less than a penny a piece, and right now the lead time on some of these is 13 to 52 weeks. It's insane. Um, I've never seen the industry like this before where it's so hard to get a hold of stuff. But you have engineers that are having their whole board put on hold because they can't get a hold of a little part like this. Pennies a piece. Oh, wrong pads. Haha, uh -huh. we'll have to move those around. Where do they go? No. They don't want me to put those on there, do they? That came in the kit. You're kidding. Is there anything over here, I guess, we can put them on? We'll do that. Okay. There's some spots over on the side here that I can maybe find a spot for one or two of these. I finally got a nice soldering iron that's adjustable. How do you determine the right temp setting? Okay. That's a good question. Um, so solder is what's called a eutectic compound. Um, but before I talk about eutectic, let me talk about solidus and liquidus temperatures. Solder that I have right now is quite obviously solid, right? I'm using it off of a spool. And when you melt a substance, uh, a non-pure substance, right? Pure substances, they go straight phase transition, solid to liquid, liquid to gas. No problem, right? You've seen that with water. But when you have a non-pure substance, say like uh, sugar water, like a Slurpee, it goes from solid to this intermediate phase of material. It's like a sludge. Um, if any of you guys live in, you know, any place with snow, you've seen it. You've seen this dirty, slushy stuff. And it can stay in that over a range of temperatures until you get to a higher temperature. That's called the liquidus temperature. At that point, it's pure liquid. Um, well, anyways, that's for mixed substances. Solder is a mixed substance, but solder is a carefully mixed substance. So when it goes through that transition, it does it instantly. It does it like it's a pure substance. That's what eutectic means. It, it goes straight from solid to liquid phase. Now, what's the right temperature? Well, the right temperature would be about five degrees above that eutectic temperature. And that eutectic temperature depends on the mixture of solder that you have. Like, uh, um, let's see if any of these say right here what they're actually made of. Of course they don't. Oh, great. Okay. Um, let's say you've got a transition temperature of and I'm just making something up here, 240 degrees Celsius for your particular 3763, I don't know, whatever it is. You'd want to be five degrees above that. However, the moment that your soldering iron touches the board, heat goes from the iron into the board and the temperature of your iron cools. So if you're just five degrees above it, it's not hot enough. You're not going to get anything done. So how much higher do you need it to be? Well, that's going to depend on your iron. If you've got an iron that's, say, a 15-watt iron, 
it can only deliver 15, there's my camera, 15 watts of energy, so 15 joules per second, you need to set the temperature higher so that by the time, you know, it starts mixing in with the solder and everything that you have there, that you still stay, you know, like five degrees above. But you don't want to be too hot, otherwise you can start frying your components. Okay, I know I kind of went all over the place there. Does that all make sense? Um, I see a lot of comments, so I don't feel like it made sense. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I don't see any comments on that. So the question is, does the soldering tip matter? That does too, because if you have, let me get some open here. I'll be honest with you. I hardly ever change my soldering tip. Um, I just use the ones that's there and make it work. But I'm not a professional solder guy. Um, my friend Sebastian is. So let's go to overhead cam two. Uh oh, where is, oh, why? There's that one. This one, there we go, okay. Let's talk solder tips for a minute. Because the solder tip is going to affect your temperature as well, uh, amazingly enough. All right, so for the fine, fine tips that I was just doing, um, if I wanted to work on an individual pin and rework an individual pin, I would probably let my iron cool down and use this guy right here. I, I never have that issue, so I never pull out this tip. But look at how small the surface area is. It's going to have a lot of difficulty allowing energy to transfer out of that small surface area into the pad and into the part. So you probably have to increase the temperature um, you know, an extra 5 or 10 degrees when using something like that. So next up, you've got kind of a general purpose tip. This one's a little bigger. That's one that's on my iron most of the time. Um, this big fat knife tip, I don't think I've ever soldered anything with it. If anything, I might use this to cut a piece of plastic uh, and stink up the room, but I, in, in my iron, Station, I don't even know where this tip exists anymore. So that leaves this one. Um, probably a good tip. I just don't use it. But for what I was just doing, soldering that thing, this one's probably a pretty decent choice. Um, I don't know where that one is, so I don't use it. <laughs> so that pretty much just leaves me with this chisel tip. And that's what's on my iron now, and that's the one that I, I tend to use. You know, it's got plenty of mass for transferring energy into the, into the board. Um, going back to your question, what temperature do you leave it at? The lowest one that you can get good results. Um, and it's going to depend on your iron too, right? Um, this one, there's a sticker that gives you ideas of temperatures. There's no way that thing's calibrated. You're not going to know. You're just going to have to figure out at what temperature solder melts. Remember that you need a clean and shiny tip to transfer energy uh, into your board. If you don't have that, this thing could be 50 degrees over temp and still not heat your solder on your board the way that you want it to. So keep those things clean and shiny. Um, one of the things I want to do as soon as I can figure out how to get a good image off the FLIR, and it might just be me pointing a camera at it, I don't know, but I want to see how accurate these are compared to tip temperature. Uh, that's an experiment we'll do sometime this week. Um, does too much heat damage the pads on the PCB? Uh, see here, it, it can. It can cause the pads to lift. It can cause the... Um, the board to delaminate. Your boards are solids. You get them hot enough, they become liquids. Uh, they go through this thing called the glass transition temperature. And even before you get to the transition temperature, these things start to break down. Uh, it's a real pain in the butt. Uh, any tips on cleaning the soldering iron tips? Sure. Um, let's 
This is came with one of the cheap kits. This is a little sponge. I don't like it because will it clean the tip? It will, but it will also rob your, your gun of heat. Uh, the moist, the water, when it vaporizes, it's, it takes a lot of energy to make that happen. So I tend not to use the sponges unless I'm somewhere and I'm using somebody else's gear. Um, what I tend to use are these things. Um, they're metallic Brillo pads. I don't really know what they're called. I'm sure somebody will drop it in the comments here in a minute. Um, but basically, you take your tip, smother it in solder, and what you're doing when you do that is you're just melting a bunch of solder on it. Flux comes out, and it starts lifting the contaminants to the surface, and then you take it and you plunge it quickly in there, and then you're left with a clean, shiny tip, and it stays at temp. Um... I don't know that there's much of a difference between the cheap ones and the expensive ones. Um, I need to go to a broader view. So, you know, here is a little portable iron station. I think it's by Hacko based on the thing. Um, but it gives you a place to store your iron so you don't burn yourself or your house down. And then, you know, you just plunge it in there and you're ready to go. Uh, but here's an example of a dirty tip. I guess we could talk about... Oh, no. I need to get macros reprogrammed. See how it looks dark and black? It is not a shiny tip. It needs to be cleaned before use. Anyhow. Any other questions before I try to remember what my train of thought... Oh, I remember I was going to solder something. <laughs> um... Is the solder especially thin or is the stock we did that one and Eric got a nice adjustable thing so we were trying to figure out temperature okay let's drop Tim and let's see what happens um, there's gonna be a little bit of thermal inertia so it's going to take a little while for that iron to decrease in temperature. But I dropped it to um, I just dropped it down to 240, which I believe is the melting temperature of the solder that I have. I'm not entirely sure. We're going to do a little bit of guessing and checking. Let's get to the microscope view. Okay, and then one of the things that I like for manipulating parts are um, my wife's tweezers. Don't tell her. She doesn't know where they are. <laughs> um, am I using a ventilator for the flux fumes? Yes. Um, this particular iron has, this is the iron and this is a suction that is sucking the fumes out, um, and shooting them off to the right. Otherwise, your body is like a hundred watt light bulb. It generates a lot of heat. And as it does that, I will back up here. Here's a mark view. All right. Your body's generating heat, and that heat causes convection. So all around you at all the time, there's this plume of air that sucks towards your body. It, it, it shoots up. And as that air shoots up, other air comes in from the side and fills that void. If you're soldering and you don't use a, you know, something to suck in those fumes, all of those fumes are going to get sucked towards your body and right up into your nose. It happens all the time. There's no getting away from it. So you need a small suction device to capture that stuff and keep it off of you. Um, you should absolutely use something for that. They do have standalone fume, you know, fume hood suckers that work great. Um, I can't use one of those on camera 
because it makes too much noise it, it would drown out everything that I'm saying but even just the little one that's on here does a great job of keeping it out of my face otherwise the body is built to get it in the face very unfortunate okay let's get back to soldering what am I doing no I don't want picture-in-picture picture. I want microscope view there we go okay so back to stealing things from the wifey so the goal is to get these things located if you notice you can actually put this particular part if you had to on two different size pads it wouldn't be easy it wouldn't be pretty it wouldn't pass IPC 6 you know is it a J standard 610A or 600A inspection but it's doable okay um, if you guys go back to watch this video before I have a chance to edit it it took like three takes for me to figure out to you know put the microphone on and stuff so the first minute or two are wasteful but after that I built this little tool which is just a little bent piece of wire and I'm using the tip to push down on parts to keep them from moving while I mess with mess with things whoops I actually have a smaller one that I made out of uh, a dental scraper that I might have to pull out stay so we're gonna get that in place apply a little flux there we go no nope. I'm gonna have to use the smaller one I need something with a finer tip I wonder if I have it handy if not we will do one without it okay I don't see it immediately in the vicinity so we'll just do it without it it's a good learning experience anyway see see um Patrick asks, can I use an N95 mask if I don't have a suction device? That's a great question that I don't, I'm not really qualified to answer, but my gut says no, you can't. Uh, chemicals are much smaller than the 95 micron or whatever the N95, you know, um, the N95 takes out takes small particulates out of the air that go into your lungs and settle down there, right? They're going for a particular size that's hard for you to cough up and and you know can really settle in and cause lung damage. Uh, solder metals, um, flux, these things are some of them are coming out as molecules, and I don't know that they're good for you. I can't imagine that they're good for you, but I would imagine the N95 is insufficient. Um, what about a little fan nearby? I mean, e even if you don't have a suction device, certainly you must have a, um, a house fan or a ceiling fan or something, um, something nearby. Can you do something that does VOCs like a respirator? Man, I wouldn't. Y yes, you can. And if, if you don't have an option, absolutely you could. But man, that's going to make for some uncomfortable soldering. I don't think I'd enjoy that. All right. So here we've got our part. Putting a little bit of heat on each side. Oh, not enough. Let's try that again. See how that part's floating on me? It's really wanting to move. I'm going to have to pull a tool. Okay. Um, this could be a sewing needle. This could be anything. But you can't let your parts move around on you or they're going to go spots you don't want them to. So you need something where you can redirect that force. Tweezers would be fine. 
But as long as you get that part locked down, you can go in and you can grab the other side. But man, it's so much easier if you have something that just holds that part in place. Give me a second and I'll see if I can find my other one that I made. Um, that is a horrible joint right there. But it will work. It's just not pretty. Give me half a sec here. I'm just looking around the old workbench shop. And I'm just not seeing it. Oh, man. Okay, well, I've got it in some other videos. Um, I did some spring cleaning today, and I've obviously cleaned it out of existence. But it's basically, it's it's basically this tool just made out of a much a much thinner tip. It, it's got a point on it, so I can get it in there, and it doesn't interfere with my iron. Um, thank you. I do have a room fan I can use. Yeah, I mean it'll help. It, it's better than nothing. Um, and it's not expensive to have a small tabletop one. If any of you out there in TV land can find one, I know they're under 50. I want to think they're cheap. Oh, Zahir, thank you. <laughs> I dropped the temperature. We were going to do an experiment, weren't we? I completely forgot. Okay. I forgot that I'd lower my temperature. You're a smart man. Okay, so let's go down even further here. Um, is it? It's dropping now. I want to go down to well below melting, and we're going to see if we can't figure out um, what melting temperature is. So my iron now says I'm at 180. So let's see if we can melt this solder at 180. Oh, we can. You know what it could be here? I could be using leaded solder. The label's gone. Ooh. Can we go down even further? Now that's as low as this iron goes. Okay. Leaded solder, non-Rojas, has a much lower melting temperature than Rojas, Reduction of Hazardous Substances Act solder, lead-free. So, let's see if I can get this unstuck. So I need to go label that spool. I also need to go wash my dang hands now. Okay, so let's take a look. So, quite obviously, we are below melting temp. Now, if you don't have a dial on your... I do need to switch the view. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you, Zaheer. <laughs> And then everything is delayed like 30 seconds, so that means it takes a little longer for me to respond. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so um, here I've got my iron, and the solder quite obviously won't melt. This is a Rojas Reduction of Hazardous Substances Axe solder. So I'm going to turn the dial little by little. Now, I do know what my temps are, so I can go up 10 degrees at a time until the stuff starts to melt. So here we should have had time. Here, let me get this out of the way. We don't need that right now. Um, let's see. Nothing. Emil, we don't have leaded solder in America either. Uh, every Well, you can if you're doing military stuff. But the reason that I have a spool of of lead solder and I didn't realize it was lead is because that's probably been in my collection for 30 years. It's um, 
I've been doing this stuff since a teenager. Um, I used to work at Radio Shack, and anytime they cleared stuff out, I would collect it. Um, and when they closed Radio Shacks, I would go in there and collect stuff too. So still no melting. I am at 210 according to the station. I'm going to jump a little. I should be at 230 now. We still have nothing. So we're still trying to answer the question, how do I know what temperature I need to be? So now I'm at 230 and I'm melting all of this lead free solder onto the tip of my iron and then I'm going to take it off. All right, let's see if we can't solder something and see what it looks like now. I am just at the I am just at the melt temp. And I'm going to open up this. But yeah, I don't even know if I could buy lead. I don't know. Especially in California, I don't know if I could buy that anymore. And to be quite honest with you, I didn't know that I had it. Um, the only... I mean, there's a chance it's... No, it's got to be lead solder. You can get low-temp alloys that are lead-free. Bismuth and uh, whatnot based solders. But uh, I would imagine that is from my collection. Oh, well. Okay. Let's see what we can do here. This is a diode. These are interesting components to solder onto things. I forget what this package is called. Jesse might know. But I'm going to do the same basic thing. I want to get some solder uh, flux. Get that part stuck. It would be great if I had an extra tool to hold the part in place. If you go back and rewatch this video in the f um, after the first minute of tomfoolery, you'll see how I made that tool. Um, but let's see what happens. And we are right at temp. Let's get this melted. So I'm going to get solder melted on my tip so I can conduct the heat out with greater ease. Get this thing next to the part in the land pad. And I don't know if you can tell, but I just can't get enough heat into that to melt it when I need it to. So let's go up five degrees, shall we? No, oh, let's go up six degrees, shall we? It's very sensitive little knob. Right now I'm using the Yeah, Jesse, I don't know the name of these either. Um, I think we looked at them for a keyboard matrix when we were doing the basic design. And we're like, nah, this is going to be too hard for people to mess with. Okay. So with this iron, I am 8 degrees above what I need to be and it doesn't really want to melt so what I'm doing is I'm getting solder onto the tip letting it melt there getting a nice liquid is you know liquid thing and then going down and getting that close to the part and using that melted solder that liquid solder to try and get that to connect. It's a lot of work though. And it's not leaving me with good joints. So that's six degrees above where I needed to be. Now we're 10 degrees above where I needed to be and we're gonna see. We did, I said they'd be a pain. Is it? Yes, Jesse, yes it is. <laughs> These things just wanna roll away. 
So I'm just going to go there and see if I can remelt this and get a better fillet because if you don't get the solder hot enough, you end up with a cold joint. Cold solder joints can have impurities and they lack interfacial crystals that connect the metallized pads to the metal to the bulk solder and the bulk solder to the metallized pads on the part. Okay, so there we go. Um, it's not a good joint. It should be, there should be a fillet, not peaks and knobs. So those joints are too cold um, at six degrees above. At 10 degrees above, three, four, five seconds is too long. They're not ideal. They'll work. The part is indeed stuck. There are metal connections. You know, there's no bridges. The joint will work. It ain't pretty. So you could go up higher if you don't damage the joint or if you can't damage the part. And this diode should be able to take it. All right. So to recap what we've done, is taking a piece of wire that I got from the garage and bend it into a shape so it can hold down the big parts. Um, there is another one floating around here. I just don't know what I did with it. I moved things around today. I brought in a tool, a little tool table behind me. Um, so I did a lot of moving. I didn't organize, reorganize, I just moved stuff, so I lost it. But anyways, we did that. We showed you how to solder parts, you know, some of these small pads using flux and um, and using a chisel tip. Talked a little bit about, you know, which iron tips to use. And that was pretty much it. Do you have any other questions that I can answer for you um, or anything else that you guys would like to see demonstrated? I mean, I, I accomplished my goals, but we've got quite a few people here. So if you have any questions, my time is your time. What would you like to know? Let's see. Microscope is a bit out of focus. Sorry about that. Um, I need to find a way that you guys can, I wonder if we can do it through Discord, if there's a way that you guys can ping me and let me know things sooner, um, because there is going to be a good 30 second delay between what I say, what you see, then you guys type, and then that gets back to me. The getting back to me part's pretty quick, but I am certainly delayed from what you are. Do you have any other questions? It's looking pretty quiet. Okay. Well, with that, uh, it was an impromptu live stream. Do make sure that you like and subscribe. We're going to go over irons and see how accurate they are temperature wise. Um, there is a trick that I can do where you, you paint the iron tip with a color that, you know, uniform albedo color, and then you can view it with the, um, with the infrared camera so we can get an idea of how accurate these digital displays really are compared to iron temperature tip. But that's going to be hit and miss throughout the week just as, as my work schedule allows. So make sure you like and subscribe and hit the little bell button and I'll see you then. So thank you so much everybody. Have a great what, uh, rest of your night. Um, I may be back on earlier playing around with the FLIR camera but I, I don't really know at this point. So thanks so much.